Good morning, Nana here. I'm now going to conduct a training on Fusion Inventory and Fusion Shipping. <clears throat> I'm conducting two batches, one batch starting on 18th of uh, April 19, 2018, and then the other batch starting on 30th of April 2018. So let me go on and show it to you. <clears throat> So these are the schedules which I'm going to do. Fine. This is a training on Oracle Fusion Inventory as well as Fusion Shipping actually. So both things put together. So session one is going to be from 18th of April and then it will be from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. India time. <clears throat> and then uh, many people are coming from uh, throughout the globe. And so what happens for them? Uh, I'm now giving you a GMT time. So you derive your time actually. Fine. It is 1.30 a.m. GMT. So if you're in Australia or if you're in US or if you're in the Middle East, what happens? You derive your time. And then it will be uh, running approximately for a month's time. And then it will be six days a week. <clears throat> Sunday will be a holiday for you. <clears throat> and so the remaining six days you are going to work upon. It is just one hour a day. And then try to practice each and everything on the same day itself. So that what happens, you won't be lagging behind on the practices basically. The second session is uh, starting on 30th of April. <clears throat> it is uh, the evening batch actually from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. India actually. So that is uh, 3.30 p.m. to uh, 3.30 p.m. GMT actually. Fine. It also runs for a month's time. And then it will also be running for six days a week. Fine. Sunday is a holiday. Fine. So to register one of the sessions actually. So this training will be mainly concentrating on the fusion inventory. Fine. There are five such topics of that. One is the inventory controls, metal transfers, replenishment, accuracy, and then fundamentals. Fine. I, uh, no, I will be saying if the agenda, I will not be able to attach it on this one. So you can just have a look at the agenda from my, <coughs> what happens. You write to me, I will not send the agenda for you. So apart from what happens, I will be creating a complete enterprise structure. <clears throat> so that what happens, you'll understand about how an enterprise is getting created. And then afterwards, what happens, you will be learning about the purchasing, receiving also, as well as the data migration also. <clears throat> Fine. It's also be taught. Apart from that, what happens, you'll be having a coverage on fusion tripping also. Fine. That will also be fully covered. And then you'll be having an introduction to SCO, no? Fine. supply chain orchestration about how it's being configured in fusion. It's a beautiful concept. And then it is a new concept in fusion actually when compared to uh, EBS basically. So you'll be introduced to this now. <clears throat> and then the other pillars will be conducted later now. And then uh, what happens will be, uh, it now makes you fully comfortable and then competent enough to what happens to configure fusion inventory actually. Fine. That much of a knowledge will be taught to you. So a release 12 instance will be given to you for practice and then every day's session will be recorded on the MP4 format so that what happens, you can very well uh, what happens, uh, practice it at your leisurely pace. Uh, only with the request, what happens, uh, please do not share the videos. You keep it with you because you are a paid participant and so what happens, you do it. And then that is the tribute you are paying to me. Fine. And then uh, send me the new prospects. Fine. I, I thank all of you for obliging for this now. <clears throat> Good. And then uh, you'll be given all the documentation now. Fine. Here, what happens in this one, I will be giving you one demo also for, for transfer order triggered by a min max actually. So to demonstrate or shipping actually. Right. So the setup part will be conducted in the real training. I have already set up everything. And then uh, I will be, uh, what happens is uh, doing the transactions here, right? And you can have a look at the transfer orders which are triggered by a min max plan. So setups will be taught in the inventory training actually. So the uh, module, this uh, training is now very cheaply priced. Nowhere, what happens, you'll find it not fine. So you compare the cost and coverage of this not fine. It will be nowhere uh, available in the world actually. And I am one of the best trainers in the world. <clears throat> and then I'll be covering the concept to a great extent. And then you will definitely understand a lot about it as such. <clears throat> fine. So even freshers can very well join and then they can do it now. Fine. Because what happens, uh, we doesn't, uh, what happens, uh, 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 what happens, uh, uh, so you need uh, any prerequisites for the assumed as well. So no prerequisites are assumed from the participants. So they can very well understand it. Fine. If they follow it, simply whatever I teach, they can do it now. And uh, when you're sending the payment, what happens? Uh, there are in the last batches. I had uh, so many Pradeeps, so many Kumars, so many Ashoks. So what happens? You mention your email ID on your narration of the payment. Really. So that what happens? I can distinguish who has paid. And then uh, what happens? You send me a screenshot also of this now. And then uh, uh, write to me for any clarification of this now. Fine. The payment confirmation as soon as you pay, what happens? You take a screenshot of it and then send it to me. So that what happens? I'll now register for the course now for one of the sessions actually. <clears throat> And then uh, I will know as, as after sales service, what happens, I'll be giving you an implementation assistance also. I will be, if you're implementing it and then if you're getting stuck, you can very well contact me. So that situation normally will not occur because what happens, you'll be fully proficient on the module and so, but even then what happens if you're getting, uh, now I have already supported some four to five people basically. And then in their implementation, what happens, I used to make a check of it whether they have done everything correctly or not. <clears throat> so you can send the payment to me to one of the banks basically. So I have a, a account in RB, RBL bank, find these are my account details. Fine, this is a HDFC bank. Fine, you can know it now. You can freeze this uh, screen and then what happens? They take, the, take down the details basically. So, these are two banks, and then two more banks also I have account now. Fine, that also you can just go on and pay a payment. Fine, one is ICC bank as well as a Kotak bank. 
So make a payment and then what happens? Uh, communicate to me the payment details and then uh, remember to mention your email ID on the narration of the payment so that what happens I can understand who has paid for me. And then this is a really a very good stepping uh, stone for you to what happens? Uh, uh, <coughs> learn Fusion applications actually. The first uh, activity on this was inventory actually. So do uh, what happens? Uh, join this course. And now what happens? I'm now going to show you what happens? A glimpse of what exactly is a transfer order triggered by MinMax. <coughs> And I will be explaining the process fully in the training. But here, what happens? We are only getting a glimpse of it exactly. Fine, you go there and then show it. <clears throat> so let me go there. And then here, uh, what I'm going to do is I've already done the setups now. I'll now show you what I have done on this place now. I'll go there. So I will now go to this place. I'll go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> I will now go to the sub inventories and locators now. The task name is manage percentage, sub percentage. Locator percentage. So those who don't know fusion, it doesn't matter. Fine, I will be teaching it from right from scratch and now. And so those who know fusion, they can very well understand it. Otherwise, what happens? Just watch it about how what I'm doing it now. But every each and every setups will be taught to you in the real training. Actually, it will be from scratch. Actually, <clears throat> I have gone there. So here, what happens? I have one sub inventory. I will select it and then go to the manage. What happens? Manage item sub inventory. So this is the area where what happens? We are going to restrict the item as well as we are going to do the min max planning also. Fine, click on the manage sub inventory. On this one, I'm going over there. If I select it and then click on this, what happens? I will now go and then edit it now. <clears throat> so here, what happens? I'm now set up this one. Fine. Uh, minimum is 10 and then maximum is 50. And then the fixed lot multiple is 5. And then the minimum order quantity is 10. And then what happens? The maximum order quantity is 40. And then we can source whenever the item quantity is going below 10. What happens? We can source it from three different means now. Fine. Either from organization or supplier or supplementary. So in this one, I'm going to do it for our organization. So this is the equivalent to IRISO of e-business. Okay. So the IRISO is basically organization. So IRISO is known as a transfer order here now. So we'll be creating a transfer order for this for the sourcing. And I would like to modify this. I've tested it already for one of the items. Now I will now see the stock of it actually. I will now go there. I will now open up a new tab. Then I will now put it over here. If I go there, I will now put up. And then I will now have a look at the stock. How much of stock is there in this now? I click on it. So we'll now go to the, what's called it? We go there. I go to the warehouse operations and then I go to the inventory now and then I will now have a look at the stock. So I click on the inventory and then I will have a stock of it now. So one of the item <coughs> has to be tested and find go there. In this item quantity, I will now say N10 underscore CO and then give a tab, cost test this item and go there. I will now click on online and then click on search now. So we will now see what is the stock. So we already have a stock of 50 and so what happens for the min max to trigger, I would have to have a setting of higher actually. Fine, go there. Let me set it up for the what happens if the stock level is now what happens? I will not make a set. What happens? The maximum quantity I will not go for under the hundred or the one hundred and fifty. I will not go for. I will not go for one hundred and fifty now. I will go there. And then here, what happens? I will not make a stock of what uh, sixty now. So since we have already a stock of six hundred and fifty, uh, what happens? It's not less than sixty. You know, we have stock. So what happens? The min max will fire now. And then it will not try to bring it to the maximum for 150 now. Fine, go there. And then the five, ten, and forty. So all these parameters will be fully explained in the training. I'm not going to explain it now. So the min max planning is enabled for this now. So we have a stock of 50 and so what happens? We are now have a, uh, we, we need minimum 60 to be maintained. So whenever we run it, what happens it to be, what happens to creating it? So I'll now save it now, fine. save this parameters, fine, click on close. And then let me run the min max concurrent. Fine, go there, it is not done. So here, what happens, I'll now go there. So let me run it now. I'll now open up one more tab region in which, what happens, I'll be running the min max concurrent. Now. <clears throat> go there, click on it. I will now go to the schedule process, fine, click on the more. I will now go to the scheduled process. From where what happens? I'm going to run a concurrent. This is known as an ESS job in uh, Fusion, actually. Fine. It is the enterprise scheduler service job. I click on the schedule part. Here, what happens? I'm going to run it. So it's print min max. Print min and then give it down. So there, enables is known as a, a min max planning report. Here, it is known as a print min max planning report. I click on OK now. And then I'm going to run it now. <clears throat> So I have two organization, N101 and then N102. Fine. This year I'm now going to do it on N102 R and give it a And then I will now solve it by item inventory item. <clears throat> I will not give it the range of items, it doesn't matter. Leave it now. Fine. You go there. Uh, I will now make it as a sub inventory level. And then I have got only one sub inventory over here. And then I'm going to choose the sub inventory over here. Now. Fine. Go there. I'm selecting it now. So go down. And then here, what happens? I'm not doing it. Fine. Here, the demand cutoff date. Fine. Go there. So the demand and supply is going to balance basically. I will not say whatever demand is there up to fifth, it will not consider. And then there is no offset at all. And then the supply cutoff date is also coming. Go there. And then there is no offset at all. And these two things is the restock is going to yes now. Fine. Go there. So I'm now leaving the remaining things as such. Now I'll be explaining all the parameters later on. Now. Fine. The training. Fine. Go there. You got plenty of parameters over here. Now. And all these things will be explained over here. Now. Go there. Is it and then with which what happens? The restocking is going to yes now. Fine. That is a very important one. 
So if the restocking is going to, yes, what happens? It will be creating a transfer order onto the, the system now. Hey, Amma, that's where Radhika. Restocking is going to, yes, no, fine. I'm not going to try and go there. <clears throat> click on it and then click on submit. <clears throat> fine, I'm going to submit. So uh, restocking is going to this thing, yes, no. Uh, and then I will not click on submit. And so what happens? You know, see the output of it. I'll click on submit. <clears throat> And submit again, fine. 347 is now submitted for this thing. No, will not run it. And go there and have it. So remember, uh, we have given the sourcing from an organization. And so what happens? It has to create a, a, a transfer order from moving it from one or to other org. No, and there is known as a transfer order. So it'll be creating it now, fine. So the inter org parameters has to be set up. The costing has to be set up. There are so many setups that everything will be fully explained on the thing. Fine. You select it now. And then here, what happens? You go down. And then the bottom, what happens? You go down, and then we'll now publish it and see this. If I go there, republish it now. Finally, let me republish it, and then have a look at the output now. So click on it, and then here, go to the export, and then go to the PDF now. I'm exporting the PDF file, and then let me save it now. So I'm saving it now. Fine, go there. So we'll now open up the MinMax planning. So if you go on and see what happens, uh, you'll be getting all this information now. Right? Uh, the complete information of the organizations of inventory. Whatever you have passed down as a parameter, everything is coming up here. Restock is yes, no. Fine, go there. And then it will be having a batch number also. It will be having a batch number of what? Minmax 943247. Fine, the batch number now. In release 13, I am now working on release 12. And then release 13, what happens is sometimes uh, we have to give the batch number from and to. Otherwise, what happens is the orchestration, supply chain orchestration is not working. So uh, you remember to do it now. Fine, if it is not working, you have to put the batch number over here. Fine. This minmax is now having a batch number of minmax in the capital letters and then the concurrent number. The ESS number as 94347 is now appended to the minmax. So there's the batch number here now. I go down. And then have a look at the thing which is now going to show an output now. Fine. Go there. Then I'll have a look at it. So it is now recommending 100 now. So we need to, what happens, uh, make the stock between 60 to 150. And then uh, we already have an on-hand quantity 50 and there is no supply at all. And then what happens, the total available quantity is what? on and quantity plus supply minus demand is the total available quantity is now 50. And then we need to reorder for 100 quantities. That is what us. And then what happens, every vehicle will be having, uh, what happens, a maximum capacity of 40. And so what happens, it will be recommending 40 plus 40 plus 20 as three different vehicles to be transported over here now, by which it has to come now. Right? There will be three lines for this. So 100 has now come. Now in the EBUS, what happens, uh, whenever you run it, and then in the restock is this, what happens, it goes into the interface tables of uh, purchasing directly or whatever it is. But here, what happens, the SCO, the supply chain orchestration comes into picture. So the supply chain orchestration has been beautifully uh, designed, actually. So if you see the EBUS, basically, in EBUS, what happens is that if you have a look at the demand supply demand supply balancing logic, you'll be having a demand from order management and other models, which will be coming to a centralized repository. And then the line will now become supply eligible, actually. The line, for example, the sales order line will now become supply eligible. And then what happens, this supply eligible line will be either thrown onto the manufacturing or onto the purchasing depending upon certain attributes or some other setups actually. So if it is thrown onto the manufacturing, what happens? Uh, the create supply order, LS, uh, the line will now become create, uh, eligible for a create supply order. And so once when you accept it, what happens? It will be throwing this into the manufacturing and then the job gets mastered in the dip. And then uh, what happens? Uh, the auto create final assembly order will be running and then it will be creating the job order in dip actually. And then of course you release it and then you manufacture it. And then once the job is completed, what happens? The finished goods stores will be updated on the system now, on the centralized system. And then what happens? The fulfillment will be communicated back to the demand system. Similarly, what happens? If certain attributes or some other setups are different, what happens? It will be creating a supply order on purchasing actually. Fine. It will be creating a purchase order on purchasing. And then it will now create a requisitions. And then afterwards, what happens? It will be creating a PO as such now. And then once the PO is created, what happens? We receive it. And then upon receipt, what happens? The fulfillment activity will be communicated back to the demanding system. So this is how the logic works now. And then uh, we have uh, one example of the back-to-back -back order. I will not show it to you. Fine. Go there. The back-to-back -back ordering. Fine. If you go and then have a look at it now. So for a back-to-back -back business process in EBIS, what happens? We, if you make the build-in BIP as well as assemble to order enabled, the item becomes a back-to-back -back orderable. So the item can be either purchased and shipped or made and shipped. It will never be interfaced to shipping execution directly on the sales order. So once when you book the sales order, what happens? It will be either interfaced to manufacturing or purchasing. Fine. It will never be what happens to ship. Because what happens, those items will be very costly items and then you will not be having any stock at all. So a back-to-back -back order can be for a make make to make and ship or buy and ship. So these two attributes to decide the item is to be a back-to-back -back order. When the line becomes supply eligible upon booking. And then here what happens, once when you set up the automatic document creation in use, the what happens, the workflow will now divert this demand into purchasing. And then the sales order will now progress to external requisition requested. And then 
when you run the rec import what happens the people will come so in this place what happens uh, before you run this program what happens it goes to sco area <coughs> supply chain orchestration area in fusion no when i'll not show you this so here if adc is set what happens it goes via this route and then what happens you complete it and then what happens the line will not progress to avoiding shipping so it is purchased and then it is not received into the appropriate sub inventory and then afterwards what happens you uh, upon receipt pure receipt what happens it will not go to the avoiding shipping so here in this case what happens if adc is not set the workflow will now divert it into manufacturing in which what happens the auto create final assembly order concurrent will be running and then once it is run what happens the aso is masked into web now the discrete job is created and then what happens item is manufactured in web and then upon completion of it and then bringing it to once when you inventorize the product and then bring it to the stores area what happens the line progresses to avoiding shipping so this is one such example of what happens a demand supply balancing basically on the back to back ordering so here uh, what happens is that uh, we have only two such systems right either the demand will be thrown onto the manufacturing area or to the purchasing area in fusion what happens is they have enhanced it now so the demand will be thrown either to manufacturing or purchasing or as a interop transfer also right that is very much possible whereas that is the three sources are possible only with the acp so in ebis only when you have an acp what happens uh, the demand uh, can be what happens uh, thrown into either what happens uh, purchasing or manufacturing or as a, a internal sales order only through acp whereas here in what happens uh, even if you don't have an acp here in fusion so the supply chain orchestration will now facilitate all the three as such right and then it is even much more powerful than what we have in uh, what's called in ebis basically right so in ebis acp decides it right go there and then acp cannot have any conditional logic for example what happens uh, if the requirement if the demand is going to be less than 100 let us now manufacture it if the demand is going to be between 100 and 500 fine what happens you know buy it if it is more than uh, what happens uh, 300 what happens uh, you make it or something like that fine so the if then else condition logic can be very well written on the supply chain orchestration actually fine we can even write our custom rules otherwise what happens the default rules will now see as per the demand one if the demand needs to buy what happens it will not buy if the demand needs to make it will not make if the demand needs to what happens to transfer it, it will not transfer it. so the default rules are written as per the demand uh, requirement actually and we can very well override the default ones with our own logic and then what happens we can even divert it also. so that's a excellent feature as far as uh, what happens the fusion is concerned now uh, but we will be introduced only to the what happens uh, only the default ones now because i am able to uh, go through the complex ones basically fine once when i experiment it and then see about how to override the defaults with my own custom rules i will not teach that also and then as of now what happens we will be having an introduction to sco actually <coughs> so this is what uh, the fusion is having so all the three sources are there now my demand is now asking it to move from another org actually so if you go there and see what happens if you go there so it has to create a transfer order it is not completed what happens if you go on and have with the transfer order the transfer order is not created actually it is not even uh, reach that area now fine it is still in the sco only fine so we'll now go there and then have a look at the transfer order now so you won't find the transfer order at all and go there so go to the home and then here what happens you go there and then click on it and then you go to the warehouse operations and then go to the inventory now we go to the inventory so in the inventory what happens i will now go there i am now i will now change the organization to the source organization 102 is a destination now fine click on change the organization to source now it's n101 and then give it up and i click on okay now here what happens i go there and then go to the transfer orders now. click on it and then i will now go to the manage transfer orders So transfer orders is nothing but IRAs for what trying to connect manage transfer orders. I'm going to go in now and go there. So I will now say the source organization is N one zero one, and then give a tab and then click on search. If you search it, what happens? You won't find any result. And then I have already completed uh, what happens the transfer order for another one. And then if you see the line status is what happens uh, null, it will not show you all the things. Fine. Line status is null. What happens? Whatever I have completed, it will not show you. So I have completed two such things. Fine. One is a transfer test item, and then one is a cost test item. and i am again doing on the cost test and go there it's all closed so it's all closed and so what happens it is not showing anything and go there now it has not reached this area at all my aco area at all it's not reached if i click on search it's not there now we will now run the supply chain orchestration now fine we are going to run the supply chain orchestration now and go there so we go there and then you go to the what's called the monitor process and then here i will now schedule a process and then i will now what happens process the supply chain orchestration fine so the concurrent name is process supply chain orchestration process is co i'm going to do it now sorry it is there uh okay let's get process you can it you know go there Just click on more schedule process <coughs> 
schedule new process now. It is process supply. I think you tap. It is a process is zero. That is the concurrent now. Fine. Process supply chain orchestration. Fine. Keep on it. Keep on it. So this is the demand supply logic basically. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say which is the demand source for this. So if you drop down, there are four demand sources are there. Either inventory or order management or SSP or planning center. Fine. These are the things which are going to come into the SEO area. So I'm not choosing this inventory for you. In release 13, what happens is there is a small bug. What happens is the batch number has to be given there. Right? Otherwise, not okay. they might have solved it. Now I'm working on release 12. But one of my students who is working on release 13, he's saying that what happens is only when you give the batch number, what happens it works now. You can see the batch number which I've given you, min max, the running number of the concurrent actually. Fine. But it is not required here now. Fine. Go there, click on submit. So we'll not submit it now. But if, you, if this is not working, then what happens? You give the batch number. <clears throat> Just have a look at it now, and then I'll do it now. You release 30. Because you'll be working directly on release 30. Release 13, 12 will soon go away. So once when it is completed, what happens? You can even uh, have a look at the uh, output of it now. So we need 100 quantities. Fine. The maximum capacity of a, 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 a trolley is only 40. And so what happens? We'll be having three lines on this one. Fine. Select it and then go there. So this is what has to go there. And then in the bottom, what happens? You cannot see this one. <clears throat> Click on it and then have a look at it output now. You will know how a look at the output now. Fine, go down. <clears throat> so we will now open up this output and then have a look at it now. Save it. And then we will now open this log now. <clears throat> Take a copy of it, control A and then control C and then put it in a word file so that whatever you can know, you will see this now. Paste it over here now. <coughs> Page up. And what happens? It has not picked up this batch number automatically. Fine. Min max and then the min max concurrent number, ESS number is not automatically picked. In research, there is a small bug. Is not saying that in the number the thing process is zero? There's no coming as such. No fine. Fine. If it comes as zero, what happens? You put the start and end batch numbers with the same number as such. Min max at the nine four three four seven is the concurrent number actually. I know that. You do it now. Uh, and, a, and they say that it is a very intermediary and then they will be fixing up the bug very fast. So the job status is success also. Thank God that no, it has not done. So now what happens, we can go and then see on our, what happens your area now. Fine, go there, we'll have a look at it. So go to the manage transfer orders and then the source organization is on. And then if I click on search, you'll be finding two lines or three lines. Okay, fine, not three lines. So we need 100 quantities, 40 plus 40 plus 30, 20, what happens, all these things. And then what happens, the line status is now open now. So it is now interface to shipping and then it is now awaiting fulfillment of the status. Also. So here, what happens, we'll, know, uh, we'll be learning about shipping also, because shipping is on us now. So if you have a look at the shipping also in this training, what happens? Uh, in the fusion order management, what happens, they're having two things. One is the order fusion order entry, and then one is the fusion shipping execution. <clears throat> so I'll be conducting a training maybe in the month of, uh, what happens, uh, May or June, somewhere else on the complete fusion order management actually. So as of now, we'll be seeing the shipping execution there is in this training. In this training, I'll be showing, I'll be teaching about the shipping execution. So shipping execution has got two parts. One is the pick release process. One is the ship confirm process. So the pick release process has got two things again. Right? The pick release as well as a pick confirm. And then here, since it is coming from order management, what happens? The automatic move order is known as a pick wave. And then the move orders are known as movement request in Fusion now. So it is a pick wave movement request which will be coming up automatically from sales order. And then what happens? We can even decide to manually confirm it or automatically confirm it also. So once when the pick wave as well as the pick confirmation process are completed, the pick release, the PR process is completed. And then afterwards, what happens? We have to do the ship confirmation process. We have to do the ship confirmation process. So the PR plus SC is SE actually. SE is shipping execution. So SC is a combination of PR plus SC. Actually. So that you'll be learning in this training. So to do all these things, what happens? We have to set up these rules now. Fine. The release sequence rule, the pick slip grouping rule, the pick uh, pick wave release rule. Fine. Here, what happens is the uh, the uh, actually is a, in the in is known as a picking rule. So here they call it the pick wave release rule, and then afterwards the ship confirmation. How long? Apart from that, what happens? We need to learn about the picking rule also of the inventory. So these three or four rules are in the shipping area, and then one is a picking rule in inventory area. So all of them coupled together will be working upon and then doing the appropriate selection. Actually, it's actually a big process in fact in the industries basically. So uh, this part will be explained to you during this shipping execution training. Actually, it's fine. the inventory plus shipping execution. What happens? We'll be learning it now. Fine. So now what happens? We have to create the pick wave. Fine. We have to get the pick wave. So we will now go and get the pick wave. Fine. Because now the transfer order is ready now. So the transfer order is made. Now we have to pick it up. And go there. We will now go to the pick wave. Now. Go there. So we will now do the pick wave now. Go there. So we will now go and create the pick wave over here now. Fine. Go to the next tab. Later. So this is the one on the transfer orders now. Fine. Go there. So 
So let us now go on and create a big wave on this one. So we are going to get a big wave now. Okay, click on it. So we go there. You go to the warehouse operations and then go to the big wave directly. And go to the warehouse operations. And then here, what happens? You can now go to the big waves. So we will now generate a big wave now. In reality, what happens? It will be coming from order management automatically. So since it is an internal transfer order, we are generating it. And click on it now. So click on the task process. And then here, what happens? You will now create a big wave. Click on create big wave. So big wave is nothing but a move order of EBIS. Here it is known as a movement request. Fine. So click on show more. And then here what happens, I'm going to put all the options over here. Here what happens, you go there. So I will now find out first of all, what is the order number now? My order number is 1020209. That is the order number now. There is a transfer order number, which I'm going to put it now. Fine, go there. So I will now make that type order as what? <coughs> what is coming? So once again, the order type, you now make a change. Whether it is a return uh, transfer order, fine, you can even uh, bring it back from this place or the sales order or transfer order. So I'm now choosing the transfer order now. So 102029, 10, and then give a tab. What happens? It will be coming automatically. Right? 102009. So 102009. 10, 2009 is the one. And then who is the customer? Fine. He is the customer. The employee name is the customer who is logged in. I said it. Fine. Go there. So destination type is shipped to. And then uh, we do not have to give a ship location. It will be coming automatically over there. Now. Fine. Go there. And then these are all the filtering criteria just like same in EBS basically. In EBS also, what happens? Uh, we can even write our uh, what happens? Uh, your RSO release sales order. In the release sales order, what happens? We'll be having three tab regions. So it's almost same. And so what happens? I'm now removing these dates basically. It's almost safe, like what we have in EBS now. Right? So the two scheduled ship date and then two requested date. I'm giving this blank. Fine, go there. Make it as blank. And then I have now given the order number to pick now. Basically, fine. The filtering criteria we are now mentioning it. Fine. You pick only this order. Fine. We are now going to do the picking. Basically, fine. so the pick release, the pick release process is now going on. Fine. It's basically called a uh, what's called a, a pick wave uh, move order creation actually, moment request creation. Fine. The filtering criteria I'm putting it over here now. Fine. So after having put the, all these things now, there's no need for us to populate anything else, fine, doesn't matter. You go to the, what's called the options area, fine, click on the options area. And then in the options area, what happens, what I'm going to do is I will not go there. So these are all coming from shipping parameters, actually. The shipping parameters are designed all these things now, fine. You go there and then click on auto confirm pick. Fine. Normally we automatically automatic confirm it. Otherwise what happens is we have to go and then confirm it manually, actually. So we will not click on the auto confirm pick. And then afterwards, what happens, we will now go there. And then if you give the ship confirmation rule, it will also be shipped actually. So this I will not give it now, fine, go there. We will now see what happens here. Uh, I have not given it now, fine, go there. So the PR process as well as AC process can be totally automated. We can even do it independently. Create a big wave separately and then do the confirmation separately and then put the period confirmation, the confirmation process. Or all the things put together, we can automate it totally also. <laughs> we will now see how much it is now going to do now in this space. Fine, go there. So I have not given auto confirmation pick. Fine, what is? I am not going to say create shipments also. Fine, go there. This much I am now putting on the options region. Fine, I have had to give a staging subunity also. I don't, I don't have any asset subunity. I am not putting an expense subunity over here. No, fine, for this exercise. Fine, go there. And then I will now click on the release now. Fine, go there. I will now take a copy of this now. Fine, notepad. I will now put it now. Fine, notepad. So go there. And then I will now release it now. So I am not going to release it now. Fine, go there. So we will now see what happens to this. So click on release now. So we are now generating the pick wave and click on release now. So the system will now create a generate, fine, will now create it and then as well as what happens, it will be transacted also. Fine. In EBS, it is known as allocation and transaction. Here, what happens, it is a pick wave creation and confirmation basically. Fine. What is? So transaction is basically confirmation. So the PR and then the PC process are getting completed together now. Fine. So they are known as a PR PC process in, uh, what in, in uh, EBS now. The pick release and the pick confirmation. And here, what happens is a pick wave and pick confirmation. So the PR process gets completed. I will copy and go there. I will not take a copy of it now and then put on the thing now. So I will now select it. And then I will now put it over here now. Fine. Pick wave number now. Fine. 51042. This is a movement request or a move on order number actually. Fine. It has got one pick slips. One pick slip has been created with three lines actually. Fine. For 40, 40, and 30. 40, 40, and 20. So three lines are there. Three picks are there basically. Go there. Click on OK now. Now, what happens if we go there and then have a look at this? Right? We'll now go to the manage transfer orders. So it is awaiting fulfillment now. Right? Go there. And then interface to shipping is now then. Right? Go there and then re-query. Open interface to shipping and then awaiting fulfillment. Right? Go there. Click on search now. You're searching it. What happens is now going over there. So it, there is no change in the status. Fine. Go there. And then click on edit and then have a look at it. Right? We'll now go on and have a look at it. So in the edit, what happens? We can now see these things now. Fine. The requested quantity, all these things are there. And if you feel like making a change, fine. What happens? You can even override it also. At the name of what happens, doing it, we can even override transfer orders. What happens? We can even edit it actually. So the system has created a transfer order, but your inventory in charge feels that 40, 40, 20 is not required. 30, 30, 10 is sufficient. Then you will now make a change and then you will now submit it. The transfer order gets changed actually. If you want, you can even make a change and submit it. 
I'm not doing anything on this now. Fine. If you click on the view shipments and request on this now, fine. Click on the view shipments and request, and then it will now show you how much it has progressed on this. Now. So the requested quantity is four. The requested delivery date is this. And then what happens? I have given an in transit uh, travel time of one day, and so what happens? I am now making it today, and so what happens? It now say tomorrow it, is, it will be delivered. Actually. So the initial ship date is this. The expected receipt date is ready to come now. Fine. Is now open, and then this is the shipment number. So the shipment number is also automatically created. Actually, the shipment number is created. It is open now. Fine, go there. So three thousand five is the shipment number is created. It has done the pick release, pick confirmation basically. Fine. This part, what happens? It has not completed. This now. So if you go there and see this now, fine. The PR and the PC process is now completed, but ship confirmation is still open. So the ship confirmation, what happens? It has now created a shipment number now. Otherwise, we had to run a concurrent call create shipments by which what happens? You can do it now. So it is not required because we are now given create shipments basically. Fine, go there. The shipment number is created, but still open. It is not it. What happens? Sent actually out of it. So you go there and see this now. In the meantime, what happens? You now go on and have a look at the stock now. Fine, go there. So on the source organization, we we'll now have a look at the stock now. How much of stock is there as such? You click on it and then go there and have a look at the stock now. So you go to the warehouse operations. And then we are going to have a look at the stock now. Fine, go there. We go to the inventory and then query for the item now. We'll have a stock now. <clears throat> so I was having a stock of I think 150. We'll now see this. What exactly the stock? My ENT underscore CU and then give a tap. I'm putting the item. Is a cost test item. Fine, go there. The item for which we have a look at the stock. Fine, go there. Click on search now. So we have a 150. Still 150 is there now. And if you see the breakup, what happens out of 150? 100 is there in my normal expense. Fine, go there. You know, come. So what happens? My uh, organization has got 150, and then the asset it was having 150. Now only 50 is there. So 100 has got moved into the staging area. The staging sub inventory is expense sub inventory, so it does not come to the space. Fine, go there. So we have a stock of 150 now. Now, as soon as I perform a ship confirmation, what happens? This will now be zeroed out, and then my stock will be only 50. It will now go away to the destination organization basically. So let us now perform the ship confirmation. So it is now staged actually. The hundred quantity is now staged. Fine, go there. So in the other one, what happens if you go there? The pick wave area, and I am in one not one, whereas this is in one not two now. Fine, this is one not one only. Same only. The same organization only. So here I go there. I will now go to the shipments area directly. Fine, go to the shipments. If you go there, then how will it now? In the bottom, what happens? It will now give you a summary now. Fine, here it is a what happens? It is now showing uh, two as a shipped also. Fine, uh, uh, it has to come as what? Uh, That means it's not staged actually. Fine, I don't know why it's not coming. Three thousand five is the one. So if you go there and then click on manage shipments and then query. Then click on manage shipments. You go to this the area and then click on search. Now. So three thousand five is my shipment number now. You know how to query. So three thousand five is there. It's still open now. Fine, that is not showing in the main one. I don't know why it's not showing. So in the header itself, it has to show. It's open. The remaining are closed actually. So it's still open now. So this shipment is not open now. Fine, actual ship date is not come. Fine, the planned ship date, the delivery date is seventh for tomorrow only because of the in transit transit time. So I given the transit time between the source and destinations one day uh, through my one of my carriers actually. Fine, go there. So I have not given it. Fine, it's not coming. So it is not at eleven. Fine, I will not click on this now. It's an open status, but it has to appear on the main area itself. Fine, give it cancel. It has to appear on the main area itself. Fine, in the main area itself, what happens? It has to say it's no staged here. Fine, I don't know why it's not coming. Is there any refresh button here? If you will not have a refresh button, fine, click on refresh it now. Fine, I'm refreshing it now. So once when I refresh it, it has to come a stage not coming around once. <clears throat> is a previous shipped one. The previous day I have shipped it. Fine, there is no coming up here now. So it is not coming over here now. Fine, doesn't matter. Uh, you can go to the other areas. Fine, I go to the customer here. Fine, somewhere it will not show as a stage or not. Here also is not showing anything. Fine, go to the order now. So here also, what I think it's not showing anything. Okay, doesn't matter. Fine, we'll now go on the click on the manage shipments. So click on the manage shipments. So we have already seen my the transfer order. What happens? You know, seen. Uh, the number is three thousand five now. Three thousand five is now open now. Fine, go there. It is not a ship actually. Fine, go there. And then here, what happens? You come back here. <clears throat> you go to the manage shipments area. And then I will now query on this now. Fine, make a blank search on this now. And the manage shipments you will now find three thousand five. So click on the hyperlink of the three thousand five. It is open now. Fine, click on it. It is now open. I'm sure. <clears throat> and here, what happens? There is no status. It is open. You go down and then see this now. Fine. Now also we can decide before you. What happens? You ship it out of your place basically. So here the process is like this now. So initially you are now picking it from the what happens your actual sub inventory and then on confirming it what happens you are bringing it to the staging area and then as soon as the vehicle is arriving what happens we are going to load it on the vehicle and then you go to ship it also. At every stage you have the option of reducing the quantity or whatever changes you want to make of the transfer orders. So here also all of us you have it. So here what happens you can decide out of forty how much you want to ship. I will not say forty. Right. Otherwise what happens the remaining stock will be back ordered. If you give thirty the remaining will be getting back ordered. 
So you go there, go to the 40, and then click on 20 over here now, fine. I'm not designing the same quantity over here now. And then here, what happens, we have to say in which method you're going to ship. Fine, shipping method is a must. Otherwise, we cannot perform a ship confirmation now. Fine, you're now given this now, fine. It is now, line is staged now. Line, line shed is staged actually, fine. Order type is order line shed is now. So the moment you ship confirm it, what happens, it will be interfacing into inventory also. Fine. So the interfacing inventory also will be happening automatically now. So line gets interfaced to inventory. So here, there in US, we have the, uh, what happens, the process called interface trip stop through which what happens, it gets interfaced. So here, what happens, you will be having a sh send a shipment advice, which is equivalent to ITS actually, which is equivalent to ITS. So if you go there and then see this monitoring, fine, you go there. So monitor process, what happens, the send uh, shipment advice will be a one, which will be an interface to uh, inventory actually, fine, which is equivalent to interface trip stop of EBS basically. Now, what happens, you go there, manage shipments, I now filled up the ship quantity, and then if you give a ship confirmation, what happens, it will ask for the shipping method. Fine, click on the shipping method. Fine. Shipping method is a mandatory one. So a shipping method must be specified, fine, go there. I have a Govinda carrier, fine, go there, enter, and then give a tap. <coughs> Govinda, Govinda, fine, I have now put a carrier. So this, in this one, what happens, I have designed the, uh, defined the carriers as well as transit times, everything will be taught to you in the real training, actually, fine, how to do all the setups, actually, fine, go there. Now, I'm going to perform a ship confirmation. Click on ship confirmation now. So I'm shipping, ship confirming it now, fine, go there. It is not giving a lot of warnings, basically. The item is not having any weight and then volume because of which all these three errors are coming. And then what happens, it is not saying, it is not having so much of a thing. The ship confirm process is unable to obtain a document sequencing. The document sequencing will be done in order management, actually. Fine, it is equivalent to what we have in, uh, what's called, in the EMS, basically. And then afterwards, what happens, uh, it is uh, unable to, the weight and volume is again not there, fine. All these things are weight and volume, basically. Wait and volume, you can ignore it, and then what happens? The document sequencing is also you can ignore it. So click on yes, and then continue on the warning message. No, I click on yes, the thing gets ship confirmed actually. Now, what happens? The shipment status is closed actually. Fine, there's no closed. Fine, you can see everything. Now, the 2005 has vanished actually. If you go there and then query on it, now fine, go there and then give a query. Fine, go there. So here, if you go and then query on this, now fine, click on search. The 3005 uh, is now coming as closed. Now. So these are ones. So it's also closed actually. So if you go to the transfer order, then have a look at it now. Fine, go there. Click on done now. So click on done. The ship data will be coming over here. Fine, go there. The ship data has come already. Fine, go there. Fine, so click on what happens. Cancel and then come out of it now. And then we'll now requery or right now. Fine, go there. And then we'll requery. Fine, click on search now. So you can now see it's shipped now. Fine, the line status is shipped. And then you can now see on the monitor process. Fine, go there. <laughs> what happens? You can now see the send shipment advice has to run now. Fine, it's not running, you see. The send ship on that basis, right? So this is going to interface into inventory now, fine. Once when it has succeeded, the status will change on the transfer order. So upon ship confirmation, this is running automatically. We can even defer it now, basically. So if you are like, defer, desired to defer the interface, what happens, the send ship on that basis will not run. You only have to manually do it. So some people will now get a manual confirmation from the, what happens, lolly driver that whether he has delivered in the destination organization or after this, they will not run it. So the process is almost same like what we have in EBS. So it is now run. The send ship on that basis is automatically run now. Now, if you go there and then requery on it, now, fine. it is now open and then the fulfillment status is now say that fine, go there. If you click on it and then have a look at it. And then give a requery on this now. I'm requerying it, fine, go there and then edit it now. Fine, click on edit now. Now it says what is what does it is now shipped is 40, and then we'll now see the view of uh, shipments and receipts. We can now see this. So if you go down and then see what happens, the shipment line is closed now. It was initially open now, it is open now. So it is now shipped. And then it is now populating the expected receipt date. That is not, it is expected on, now I am now doing it on 6th and then what happens is now expected on the destination org on 7th of April. So actual ship date is also coming. Fine, you can even modify the ship date while you are doing it now. Fine, I was uh, doing the, what's called the pick confirmation process through which what happens, uh, the date was coming and I left the date as such sometimes what is, I can do it now. And then uh, we can uh, do this now, fine, go there. There are two uh, packing slips that are available here, whatever it is now, fine, go there. The other date is available here. It is not yet received and then it is not yet delivered actually. So 40, 40, 20 is not shipped now. Now we can go to the destination organization and then see this and go there. So we'll now go on and have a look at the destination organization and go there. If you click on the manage of quantities now, here what happens, you can now see what happens. Since the 50 is gone now, fine, the interface trips off as a well done. So the expense stock will be coming to zero. Fine, we'll be having actual stock of only 50 because it's not ready. What happens, the interface inventory. So this concurrent is now responsible. Uh, what happens, this send, send shipment advice is responsible for decrementing the inventory actually. So if you go there and have a look at it now, fine. If you make a requery, what happens? The 150 stock will now come to 50 only. The expense sub inventory, the stage sub inventory quantity will now go away. Fine, click on it. And then we'll have a look at it now, fine. Go there. Click on search now. The stage sub inventory quantity will be going away. And then we have a stock of only 50, which is there. That's it. Sub inventory. Fine, 
So 100 commodities has already left this organization and then the, what happens? Uh, the shipping execution as the interface did to or what happens to your inventory actually. So the interface has happened now. So the ship confirmation process, what happens if you've got interface to what happens? It does two things. One is what? It will now relieve the reservation as well as what happens, it will now update your order entry also. If it is a, if it is coming from order management, what happens? It will be updating the order entry and then it will now interface to what happens, the receivables for the billing actually. That will also be do. And then it will now get interface to inventory for decrementing of the inventory as well as relieving the reservations, everything it will now. So some three or four processes are there along with the send. Exactly same like what we have in e-business. <coughs> Now we go there and then have a look at it. Now, fine, it's all done now. So we go there and then we will now open up this one. Fine, we will now change the organization to this one. Fine, go there. Click on change the organization. Now, here what happens? We will now go to the receiving area. Fine, go to the cancel it. We will now go to the receiving area. So on the destination all, we are going to receive it. Fine, go there. So click on change the organization and then we we'll do it. Now, fine, go there. It's the M102 is the organization in which what happens? We are going to receive it. Now, fine, click on OK. Now. So we are receiving it. Now, fine, we'll change the organization there. In the receipt area, what happens? We will now go to some other area and then come back. Now, fine, go to the shipments. And then here, what happens? We come back again to the receipts area. We click on the receipts area. <clears throat> go down. And then here, uh, what happens? We'll now query on this one. Fine. Uh, we'll now go make a query on this one. Click on it now. And then here, go to the receive expected shipments. <clears throat> so the transfer order is 10, 2009. Fine. Go there, 10. And then if you give a tap. So what happens? The number is coming. The transfer order number is 10, 2009 is coming. And then here, what happens? We go there. And then click on null. And then what happens? I click on search. So we are going to make a search of this one. Fine. The, the destination organization on the transfer order number, we are now querying it now. Fine. Click on search. It will now show you both the lines. Basically. So here, what happens? The three lines are come over here now. Fine. Go there. I will now select the transfer order number. Fine. I will now select the first line and then click on receive now. I am going to make a receipt now. Click on receive. And then here, what happens? You go there. Click on show resulted quantity. It will now show you how much is expected now. Fine. What is expected? I am receiving everything. And since the receiving, what happens? We cannot put the sub inventory only when the delivery. You can do it now. Fine. Click on create receipt. So the GRN number will be getting created now. Fine. Click on submit now. You now fill up all the details and then click on submit now by which the GRN gets created now. And then one thousand three is the GRN number. The first line is now received. So this will be getting updated on the transfer order. Fine. Go there. And then you will now see the update on the transfer orders actually. Fine. Go there. So click on the manage transfer orders. And then here, what happens? You click on done and then requery now. <clears throat> On this one, fine. Click on that, cancel it, and then uh, requery this one. Fine, go there, expand it, and then requery now. So, click on search now. <clears throat> now, it has already gone to shipped actually. Fine, you can see uh, if you go and then select the first line, second line, and then this is shipped as well as received. Also, the remaining are only shipped, but the line status is still open. Now, fine, go there, click on it, and then select it. And then, once you select it, you can see it is not received also, but it is not a delivered actually. Fine, it is not a delivered. And then you can even see on the first line, what happens? You go there, and then have a look at it. Fine, click on the view shipments and receipts now. And then you know how to look at it now. Fine, go there. It is not <laughs> required. Fine, what else? It is the expected one, but we already received it. Now, let me go and then deliver it. The moment you deliver it, the 40 will be coming over here now. And then the what happens? This line will get closed actually. Fine. Once it is delivered, the line will get closed naturally. It is shipped and received. And then here it is ship, shipped. And then the line should just gets closed once it is delivered now. We go there and then let's deliver it now. Fine, go there. So we have done it. Fine, click on done. We'll now go and then deliver it now. <laughs> So go there, we'll now do the put away now. I click on this and then go to the put away transaction, put away receipts now. So here, what happens, we'll now go down. So one second, uh, we'll now, in the main area itself, how much to deliver will also show now. Fine, go there. So lines to deliver from this child are one now. Fine. Lines to deliver is one now actually. So if you click on this, what happens, you can now see this now. Fine, click on this now. The lines to deliver is now showing how much has been de delivered, how much has to be inspected, the thing's showing. Fine, this one. So 102, 102.009 is a document number. Fine, 40 quantity is now eligible for this now. You can now select it and then what happens, you click on put away. So we're putting away, what happens, we are going to do it. Put away is nothing but a delivered transaction of inventory now. Fine, go there. Now inventory is coming. The sub inventory is also coming. Fine, like that. We won't deliver it now because so here only what happens, we are run the min max planning. So it's automatically populating it. And if you want to override at the time of delivery, what happens, you can even override by dropping it. I don't have any of the sub inventory. I'm not just keeping it as it's not. And select. And then here, what happens, we'll not click on submit. By which order this line gets delivered. So the put away transaction is now created and completed. And so this line is now completed as far as your IR ISO is concerned. Fine. The internal transfer order is now completed. Fine. Click on done now. It's all completed. If you go to the manage transfer orders, then here what happens? You can now say click on done and then come out of it now. Cancel it and then requery it now. Fine. Cancel it. And then have a look at it now. Fine. Go there. And then, and then query it now. Fine. Go there. Click on search now. <clears throat> you can now see what happens. One line is gone away because it is already done. Fine. Go there. And then when you're querying it, what happens? If you have a null status, it will now show you everything. Just of open, what happens? You make it as a null. It will now show you both the open and close. Fine, click on search now. The line is closed. Fine, go there. You can see everything is now showing now. Fine, two lines are open. And then uh, what happens? Uh, we have 140 quantity on this now. Fine, fine, that is still open. Fine, on this one. On this one. 102009. Fine, what is? So the 102009 is closed actually. 
10 2009 is not closed over here 10 2009 these are all still shipped and then they are open now my lord is not coming so if you go on then select it and then click on the edit now if you go on and click on the edit now it will not show you what has happened and then click on the view shipments and receipts it will not show you everything over here now at the bottom also so when it is received the receipt date also it will not show you it was expected on so and so let's say 7th and then we are receiving it on 10th what happens we will be calling the carrier people and then say are you are not delayed by three more days why so so we can even optimize the transportation by what happens seeing when it is expected and then when it is delayed actually received actually fine by which what happens we can even optimize the transportation because transportation management is now becoming a big problem in many many industries and so what happens the otm is a module which will be optimizing all the transportation here it's okay but is expected some of them given so if it's okay that's a different thing but in reality what happens they'll be get and then the shipment status is closed actually and then here what happens the line status is also closed the third line is now closed and then it is not shipped as well as what happens received it right? the delivered is not showing you and also delivered so this is one such example of what happens your transfer order and then i have shown you only the transactional part but the setup parts will be explained during the actual training as in the real training what happens will be explaining all the, the things so similarly we'll do other things also fine i'm not doing it fine just only one online i've just shown you so you'll be understanding it no fine and then uh, uh, again i'm just giving you a reminder that whenever, whenever you want to join this training what happens you please what happens uh, i will not show you my go there so i have now demonstrated a transfer order uh, triggered by a min max planning and then from what happens inventory to purchasing fine that module to module integration also be shown and then uh, what happens i will not try to create a ir iso itself fine for the internal requisition and the internal sales order also i will not try to do it now fine so there will be so many things uh, which i am not committing now because what happens i have to practice those things now so once when i practice it i will not show those things now so this is uh, basically an introduction to seo also and then the complex is see i'm still learning and then once when i learn it i will not show you those things also right so you can decide upon one of the sessions and then once when you make a payment you want to join session one the morning batch or evening batch please communicate to me and then on your uh, payment narration please mention your email id so that what happens i will understand about who has paid that you will get a rich experience and then what happens uh, the complete things will be taught to you as far as inventory is concerned and so what happens uh, i have the agenda and then uh, uh, if i cannot attach it or not, write to me uh, at uh, this mail id so what happens i don't send you the agenda also of this course actually so you can have a look at it also so it's starting on 18th and now you have time to decide on this now fine and then you can compare the price fine nowhere on earth you will be getting what happens such a cheap coverage at this now fine <laughs> it's a very cheap one and then since it is a public batch i'm conducting it a very cheap batch basically fine 3000 so please do join and then what happens uh, get benefited and then what happens uh, please do not share the videos and then there is a real tribute to me and then uh, pass on the new prospects to me fine so pass on this video also to your friends and then what happens uh, let them all join fine so let us all soon meet on 18th or 30th as per your decision as such fine about that so i am now publishing it and then what happens you can even subscribe to my channel ananta nana and then what happens in this video itself what i will be having a subscribe button on the bottom and then you can subscribe it and then uh, what happens uh, you will be getting whenever i am learning something new what happens i'll be uh, uh, uploading it over there now and then you'll be getting a lot of information and thank you bye bye and then see you very soon fine bye <clears throat>